Bobby? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Okay. Yes. The reading this evening is from Matthew chapter 6. In praying, do not babble like the pagans who think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them. Your father knows what you need before you ask him. This is how you are to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. If you forgive others their transgressions, your Heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your transgressions. Let's bow our head for the prayer. God, our Father, in your care and wisdom, you extend the kingdom of Christ to embrace the world, to give all men redemption. May the Catholic Church be the sign of our salvation. May it reveal for us the mystery of your love, and may that love become effective in our lives. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
tan gọi là không That ends our uh, prayer service that we open with every meeting. And now we have Claire to give us the three minute liturgical presentation. Good evening. Tonight I'm going to talk about what is a saint. As Catholics, we assume that everyone knows what a saint is, and we refer to the saints often in prayer and in holiness. The first thing that we typically think of when we hear about a saint is a good or holy person. But history is full of many amazing and tough saints. The Catechism of the Catholic Church addresses the saints and canonization in more detail. But this is what the saints mean to me. <clears throat> I love reading about the saints. I find their stories so intriguing and every chance I get, I'm either buying a book or a DVD to learn more about their lives. There are so many saints through the ages, both old and modern day. We have the warriors such as St. Joan of Arc and St. Ignatius of Loyola, the martyrs such as St. Thomas More, St. Lucy and St. Cyril, and the popular saints such as St. Michael the Archangel, St. Francis of Assisi, St. Christopher and St. Mother Teresa. Of course, I could name many more. The saints are our role models and that we identify virtue, virtues that are admirable and we want to model. It is so much easier to follow a person that inspires or motivates us to live a holy life and grow in virtue by his or her example. Virtues such as humility, charity, justice, and temperance are just a few that you will learn much more about during RCIA. However, what really stands out for me when reading about the saints is their love and devotion to God. They love God with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength. Today is the feast of Pope, of Pope St. Gregory the Great. Pope St. Gregory the Great was born 5040 and, and died 604 was the son of a wealthy Roman senator. His mother and two of his aunts are also saints, which provided him with a strong and divide religious upbringing. His skill in grammar and rhetoric were exceptional, and he followed in his father's political footsteps by serving in public office as the prefect of Rome. To certain their call to religious life, he sold all of his possessions and converted his home into a Benedictine monastery. He used his liquidated assets to build six other monasteries. Because of his talent and intelligence, he was unanimously chosen to become the Roman pontiff, the first monk to become a pope. During his lifetime, Rome was sacked by invading barbarian hordes, and the city also suffered severe damage from flood and pestilence causing his pontificate to, to be an important one. He brought stability and order to the church in a time of great societal and cultural up upheaval. His profound influence on the doctrine, organization, and discipline of the church cannot be underestimated, thus earning him the title, The Great, which he shares with only two other popes. For his abundant doctrine, doctrinal and spiritual writings, he is also considered to be one of the four great doctors of the Latin Church. He is most commonly known for promoting and standardizing the sacred music of liturgical worship, now called Gregorian chant. Pope St. Gregory the Great is the patron of popes, masons, choir boys, singers, teachers, and musicians. I'm going to end with a quote from Pope St. Gregory the Great. There are in truth three states of the converted, the beginning, the middle, and the perfection. In the beginning, they experience the charms of sweetness. In the middle, the contests of temptation. And in the end, the fullness of perfection. <laughs> this is available every day. If you look at the morningoffering.com, it's a website. You can find the saint of the day and a lot of other prayers that they offer. It may only take a couple of minutes, but it's worthwhile reading. Thank you. 
Thanks, Claire. Now, Deacon Bill, can you please uh, take over and introduce yes. our speaker? I'm looking for Camilla. Well, there she is down here in the corner. Okay. Um, Camilla, are you still connected with the uh, Avila Institute? Yes, I you're still, still am. You're teaching online there too. I haven't been teaching, but that's more a lack of time than opportunities. It's, yeah. Okay. Uh, Camilla has uh, got a good back background. She's uh, trilingual, um, and um, she uh, was completed a master's in theology, master of arts in theology, three years ago, two years ago. In two thousand eighteen, two years ago. Two thousand eighteen, right? And she is connected with the Avila Institute, which is a, an institute of spirituality, and she's. She's taught, it, taught online for them, um, and she's taught for us for a couple of years now, too, as, as well. So, Camilla, uh, the floor is all yours. Awesome. Super. Thanks. Hey, everyone. Welcome to your second class in RCIA. I am excited. This is an exciting time for you. Um, it is... Uh, crazy time in the world and honestly it's it's um i think during crazy times we learn what we're made of and we learn where our priorities are and i think no better time than the pandemic to remember that mm -hmm. god is god and and we're not him and uh, so much is out of control right so i today we're going to be focusing on um slowing down and entering into uh, a little bit deeper understanding of what prayer is. Um, and I understand that everybody has their catechism and their Bible. And so I usually like to also introduce you to the catechism because those two books are going to be instrumental to your growth in your faith. Um, one thing that I also like to like explain is that we're not born with this knowledge, right? We, the, the human mind, we don't know. We really can't choose evil for the sake of evil. That's literally impossible for us. So then you say, well, why do people choose evil things? Well, we choose evil things because for whatever misunderstanding, a poor formation of our minds is we actually perceive them as good. And so to really discern what is good and what is evil so that we don't choose evil things for us thinking they are good we need to instruct our intellect it's the intellect it's it's by studying that you're going to be able to understand oh okay this and this so eating apples and carrots is really good for me eating chocolate cake is not so i want so then then after you understand the good your will can go after it can desire it and then you can act towards that right and, in the, and it's just like that in religion. And in fact, we owe to God to worship him, right? But there's a lot. So who is God? Has he revealed anything to us? Like those are all really critical questions that we need to ask as humans, right? As creatures. And so um, as we learn our faith, what we do is we form our minds to understand how God made us to understand why God made us. And as we allow our intellects to be transformed and changed and um, formed into the image that God created, what happens to our desire? Our will starts changing. So at first we might be really attracted to sin because that's what we love, right? But as we learn what God's plan is for us, our heart, our, our sort of, like we sort of understand that, wait a minute, no, sin is not really good for me because of all these reasons. Like, and then you start the journey, which is a journey. And it's a lifelong journey and battle into sanctity, which um, um, Claire talked about, the saints, right? That's, that's what the saints are. The saints are not born saints. They, they become saints by the act of God in them, by them allowing God to work through them, okay? And so you're, 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 
you started this journey and that is so exciting like like it's it's the most exciting journey you could possibly ever begin and it's the most difficult too but don't worry you're not alone so let's start with our um talk tonight um so i'm going to share okay we're going to do a couple things today i'm going to share my screen i'm going to share my screen and i want you guys to get your bible and your catechism so when um i teach fourth grade um and I teach 26 kids online. So I say, on your marks, get set, go. I'll give you one minute to go get your Bibles and your catechism. You will need them tonight. So on your marks, get set, go. Go get your, your books. Oh, I see there are some well-prepared students. That's awesome. That's awesome. We'll respect the one minute um, allowance for those that and and um as you will know if you ever see me on the um on your syllabus always come with your bible and your catechism because i will be making you like what i well let everybody come back and i'll i'll uh, be saying this so it's in a very exciting day when i try to get 26 kids to like communicate through zoom all day long it's it's interesting um so one minute is almost what 10 more seconds i still don't see some some faces awesome super super awesome cool okay so then i'm also going to do some breakout rooms we're going to do some small groups and we're going to do some interactive um you know we're going to try to get this like moving and shaking so I want to start with the catechism because um, before we dive into prayer, because prayer is, is, is a vital part and, and it's a structure of the catechism. That's why I don't start with prayers. I want to see, I want you to understand how prayer fits in the Catholic life, in the old of the Catholic life. So um, how did the catechism and the Bible come about? So before... So we say, okay, man is made for God, for union with God. That way, that's why God made man, so that we can be united to him, okay? Not, no matter how great creation is, it will never satisfy the human heart, never. Um, and so men can ask, well, has God revealed himself? And the answer is yes. And the highest revelation and the most extraordinary revelation that God has ever uh, given to mankind is he actually became incarnate he himself became man and we call him he he is the second person of the blessed trinity you'll learn about the trinity uh, we have the father the son and the holy spirit and the son who became man who incarnated is now given a human name his name is jesus and he is what we call in theology the, the greatest theophany, the greatest revelation. God himself could not contain himself, his glory, and said, okay, you know what? I am going to incarnate. I'm going to share this humanity. I want to elevate what it means to be human, and I'm going to make it his own. So now, once he incarnates, uh, in, you know, once the word incarnates, now he takes on the human nature into the very essence of who God is which is awesome, which is absolutely fantastic. So, so then Jesus is walking around and he's here on earth still before he dies and, 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 and um, is crucified and rises from the dead and ascends. And he forms a church. So he calls Peter and he says, okay, Peter, you, you're gonna be the rock. You're gonna be, I'm gonna found the church. I'm gonna, I, want, I want my work to continue. He didn't say it quite in these words, but you guys get the message. I want my work to continue. And not only that, You'll later find out that he becomes present through this church he, he's not satisfied with just incarnating and saving us he says no no no. i want to continue present here on earth with us and you'll later find out about the eucharist but in the meantime jesus says okay i need to find a church i need to establish a church on earth so he picks peter the per, the first pope and he says peter which in in um petras it means uh rock upon you upon your on this rock I will build my church. So he built his church. So from Peter, then you get the bishops, you get 
all the the first apostles, the the apostles, the first bishops, and so on. And from then, it's like the little seed that becomes that starts germinating into what we can see today is a full, you know, magisterium. Um, so then the church grows into three big pillars. Well, first two, right, tradition and magisterium. So you have like the way the Christians celebrated. Um, the the formation of the apostles the formation of the priesthood like that starts getting all organized and then they say okay the through the holy spirit through the inspiration of the holy spirit who's now active in the church because jesus goes to heaven and 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 he stays with the father right he, he physically he ascends into heaven but down he sends the holy spirit and so now the holy spirit is forming this church creating um sanctifying the the body of christ and he, um, from that tradition and from that early church, now they discern a canon of scriptures. Now the Bible, as we know it today, it took many, 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 many years to form to get that there. Now from that tradition and magisterium, we get the Bible, which is, no, we can hold it in our hands now. And... You know, many, many years later, there are several catechisms. So the church has organized, has organized itself over many, you know, different periods as they, as the church sees the need to instruct the faithful, they have published several catechisms. And the one you have is the, the, the latest of them all. Um, it's a catech catechism of the Catholic church. I, I lost i didn't lose I'm, i mean i did lose but i don't i left it at church one day the green copy that you guys have but i have this one right here and so so that's like like the the skeleton kind of like the little pieces of of organizational understanding of where the catechism so i want to show you if you go online um you can get the catechism online it's all all there the catechism is divided into four parts. Go ahead and turn turn your catechism pages to the table of contents. And literally find part number one and, and like just, just trace your finger over that and read that heading. Part one, the profession of faith. So everything, well not, yeah. The, all the critical cornerstones of what we believe as Catholics, the, 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 the key concepts of what is, what we believe, what we hold dear as, as a faith, what we're asking is called an ascent of faith. That's where you're going to find that. Everything we believe, part one. Remember, we have four parts. So, that, so it's, it makes sense, right? Let's start with, okay. We want a book to instruct the faithful. Let's just first say, okay, this is what we believe. Part one. Now keep turning the page until you find part two. Can you guys see my screen okay? Thumbs up if you can see my screen. You guys would make great fourth graders. <laughs> so part two, the celebration of the Christian mystery. So it's about, okay, so we believe all these things, right? And they're based on tradition and they're based on the revelation of God. How does this belief get celebrated? How does this belief get manifested in reality? So you'll learn about the sacraments. You'll learn about the sacrament of baptism. What happens to the human soul when you get baptized? You'll, have, you'll learn about confirmation. You're going to learn about the Eucharist, the most, the, 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 the greatest gift that, you know, if God could keep giving us gifts, he, he, he just gives himself abundantly and he gives us the Eucharist. Um, and, and, and you're going to see all the beliefs, uh, sorry, the way we celebrate the beliefs. So keep turning your page and you will get to part three. So part one are what we believe. Part two is how do we celebrate this belief? How does these belief become reality? Number three is the question of, okay, so God taught all this, revealed all this. Um, we celebrate it this way. So we can, it's a very good question that we could ask. Can, does man's behavior impact? Does it matter what I do with my life? Does my body matter? 
does my soul matter? And the, 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 the quick and easy answer is yes. What you do with your body and soul matters deeply because what happens is you're being sanctified and it's not just your soul being sanctified, your soul and your body is being, your, your whole person, your whole self is being sanctified. You are becoming holy, okay? And so it matters what you do with holy things with your holy body, with your holy self. So it matters. But then it's the question, is the life in Christ? Because now you are a member of him. And so the question is, well, what do I have to do? And that's all in part three. So it's the, ten, it's the, it's the, it's the moral life, okay? It's, um, I like it to call the life of love because it's, a, it's, it's, it's to, to remain in this, this holy and loving relationship with God. It's like my husband, I can't like do bad things, right? Because he'd be like, I, this is difficult to love you when you're so, you know. Well, okay. If it's, imagine, you know, how much more it would be to remain in union with God. So that's part three, the moral life, the human behavior, the human action. And then lastly, turn the page and you will see part four. And what does it say in part four? Christian prayer. Because even though it's last, that's the goal. It's union with God. Yes, of course it matters what we do with our bodies and with our souls. Of course it matters how we treat one another. Of course it matters our moral life. But ultimate, ultimately, this, all of this is ordered to our relationship with God and how we relate with God. So, um, so there's the catechism in four parts. Like, that's it. And so now you can say, okay, I have a question on what do Catholics think about me doing this or that? Well, you go to part three, go look there. How do you, you know, moral life? Well, what about, you know, I wonder what do they believe about God? I mean, what about, what about Jesus? Or what about the Holy Spirit? Faith. What are the beliefs? You go to part one. What about here? Let me do something with you guys. Let me play a game in your chat, in the chat box. Okay, where's where is the chat? Here it is. In the chat. Let's play a game. I'm going to ask you a question, and you tell me which part of the catechism I should go. Okay, what if I had a question on what the Eucharist is, the sacrament of the Eucharist? Where would I go? Part one, two, three, or four? Just type it in the chat. Part one is belief is faith, is what two, yes, part two is the sacrament, is how it's celebrated, very good. What about how I should behave? Is, you know, is, uh, can I, can I marry, can I live with somebody before getting married? Or, you know, part three, very good, excellent, you guys. That's awesome. You know what, I'm gonna do host only because this way you guys can feel free to chat, awesome. So you guys got it, you guys are experts on the, on the catechism. So let's go back. So let's go back to my presentation. And now let's go look into the catechism a little bit deeper on what prayer means. So I put pictures of the Carmelites because the Carmelites are absolute, all saints, of course, have figured out how to pray. Um, but I think the Carmelites have a very, uh, a very specific vocation towards the, the life of prayer. And um, so there's St. John of the Cross. Then in the middle, you have St. Teresa of Avila. And then on the far right, you have St. Teresa, St. Teresa of the Little Soup. Of the Soup. So if you read anything of, from written by these um, saints, you are like in absolutely fantastic, solid, holy ground. I highly recommend anything by them. So there's the first um, itch on, on, on prayer. Go read their things, okay? Um, but now let's actually start getting into the catechism. So turn your, oh, let me give you a little lesson. You see how it says CCC 2558? So the way the catechism works is you usually don't see it referred to as uh, the pages because there are many publications of the catechism. So if you open your catechism, um, you will notice that there are some bold letters Let's say, like, let me just open it randomly. Okay, you see how there are some bold numbers, sorry, numbers, on the, okay, on the left of the paragraph, of, of each paragraph. When I say CCC, I'm obviously referring to the Catechism of the Catholic Church. 
When I put a number next to it, and this is how you're going to typically see it being referred to, that refers to the paragraph. So if I said, open to CCC4, you would open it to paragraph four, not page four, paragraph four. Do you guys see the catechism on my screen? If I go, okay, because they're shaking. okay, awesome. So let's go to CCC 2558, 2558. And let's see what it says. I have five children, four teenagers, and so they're getting home. If you guys hear the noise, it's because that's that's what's going on. Kids are coming home. Okay, so Miss Malta, uh, I have to have a better way to get there. Oh, Christian prayer. Okay, so two thousand five hundred fifty-eight. Awesome. So let's read together and read out loud. Nobody can hear you, so let's go ahead and read out loud together what it says on paragraph two thousand five hundred fifty-eight. Great is the mystery of the faith. The church professes this mystery in the Apostles' Creed, part one, and celebrates it in the sacramental liturgy, part two, so that the life of the faithful may be conformed to Christ in the Holy Spirit, to the glory of God the Father, part three. This mystery then requires that the faithful believe in it, that they celebrate it, and that they live from it in a vital and personal relationship with the living and true God. This relationship is prayer. So did you make connections? Make connections to the introduction? Of course, it's right there. Hey, nothing, so, so I'm not giving you what Camila's opinion is. I'm giving you straight out of the catechism. It all makes sense. Um, so then let's read what the catechism says about what is prayer. For me, prayer is a surge of the heart. It is a simple look turned toward heaven. It is a cry of recognition and of love, embracing both trial and joy. And it's the prayer that says that. Remember, I, I showed you a little picture of her. She's awesome. All saints are awesome. Um, so what I want to do is I'm going to break you guys out into, um, into breakout groups. And I'm going to assign a, a paragraph for each of the breakout room. Let me see this. I want to assign, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to do this in Zoom. So let's go ahead and break it out into, we have how many people here? We have 31, so, so let's say three, so 10 groups. Let's break it out into 10 groups. And what I want you to do is I want you to quietly read the paragraph that I will assign to you. And then I want you guys to talk about, about the paragraph with each other. And then when we come back, one person, just in a simple sentence, will relate back to us what that paragraph is about. Okay? So. I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to assign this to you guys. Okay, so let's do this. Um, I'm going to do breakout group uh, 10. Hold on. No, I just want, let's do small groups, small, bigger groups. Let's do five groups. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's do seven groups. So, we're just going to finish in paragraph 2565. So group, group, out, group one starts with 2559. Is this confusing? Thumbs up if it's too confusing. Thumbs down if we're good. Yeah, it's confusing, right? Um, I'll just, you know what? I'm going to send I you guys. Write and I'll it just... down. I can write it down in the chat if you, if you want me to. Yeah, that's a great idea. That's a great idea. Let's do group one, just the paragraph 2,559, and then group, breakout group two, 2,560, and so on. And group three, 2,561, group four, 2,562, group five, group six, and group seven. Okay, so well, here you go. Hold on, breakout rooms. We said seven rooms.
Hold on. Let's see how this goes. It doesn't let me do it for some reason. And yeah, that's okay. Don't worry. I'll put it in the chat because it's probably because you're not the whole. Yeah, thing. that's what I'm. It should. Don't worry. That the reason, but yeah. I realize that also we could have like a lot of. Um, let's just see how it works. I was in five. I, I wasn't paying much attention. No, you put me in. Who's all out here? Just. Yeah, but yeah, fine. No. Okay, you guys have which paragraph? Okay, I'm I'm lost. Which group is this? Do you know which room this is? Oh, I think Karen, this Lori. is the main room. <laughs> this is the main room. Okay. Yeah. So you guys rebelled? You guys didn't want to go to any breakout rooms? You're like, no, we already know all this stuff. I'm going to give them two minutes, three minutes.
Okay. So everybody should be coming back. Okay, I guess I'm leaving the chat room. <laughs> well, that, was that? Too, that was too short. <laughs> How did that go? Did that go okay with everybody? That was perfect. Yeah. Yeah. It was oh, good. Great. I'm glad you guys okay, liked sure. it. Okay, good. So we can do it again. Okay, so great. But now I have another treat for you guys. This mm -hmm. is anonymous. Don't feel like he's like... Um, so it's important that everybody mute your phone so that we can hear you because there is a lot of background now. So please mute. Oh, I can mute everybody. Oh, that's my favorite button as a fourth grade teacher. Here. There. Everybody's muted automatically. There. Done. You can mute everybody. When you're the host, you have the power. It's literally, that's the one thing I tell the kid, the, my, my co teacher. That is the one button I'm going to miss when everybody comes to class. I don't have like mute. Everybody's quiet. Okay. Enough of fourth grade. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drop a link in the chat box. Okay. And I want you to click on that link and it'll take you to something called Padlet. And you're going to click on the bottom right. There's a little button, a little pink button. And you're going to click and you're going to start writing. Prayer is, and I want you to finish, I want you to continue that sentence. From your discussions of what you guys did in the group, you start sent, start your sentence, prayer is, what did you learn? And just continue, blah, blah, blah. You don't have to put your name, you don't have to, the goal is for us to all see what everybody learned, what prayer is from their little mini, 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 mini study. Okay, so what we're doing is we're actually doing it to everyone and not privately to you, right? You're, everybody can see this, right? Okay. So, for example, prayer is, it, can you see it? A relationship with God. Can you see that? So, there you go. Oh, exactly. Beautiful. I can't see that. How, how can I get to that? You, can you see the, the okay, you need it in the chat? In the chat, I drop the link, and it'll link you directly to the Padlet. I don't think I did it. <laughs> right again, I dropped it again. Where? In Drop. the chat. In the chat. In the chat. Uh, in the below part, in the bottom part, uh -huh. uh, you have you have the microphone. Then you have, when you move your mouse, you see the microphone on the left. Then you have a, the video camera icon, then the participants, and then the chat. Can you see it? Yes. Okay, okay. click the chat. Okay. And then and, and a space in blank space on the right of your window is going to show up on the right when you click chat. Do you see that? I click chat, but I don't uh -huh. see a blank space. Okay, right. when you click chat, w does a chat box come up? Let's see. Uh, let's see. Type message here? Yes, okay. No, no wait, wait. I'm going to put a link. Don't, don't type anything in there. I'm going to put a link for you to click on now did you see do you see that link i guess it's lots of links just just the the, the the most recent one okay click on that link 
and you will see something like a beautiful like yes okay. okay on this screen this is called a padlet at the bottom right corner there's a little pink button do you see that yes okay you want to click on that and then it'll open a little white box and you can respond you can write your response there and it's simultaneous so we can see what everybody is putting there and you can all read everybody's response. Isn't this cool? I love it. <laughs> this so let's start reading this together. Intimacy with God. Yes. Prayer is lifting the heart and mind to God. Our prayer will change as we grow in our spiritual life. Yes, it will deepen. Yes. There are many types of prayer. Yes, that's true. Prayer is the place of covenant. Absolutely. Prayer is a response of love. Beautiful. You guys, you guys are, you guys, you guys got it. This is absolutely perfect. Prayer is a relationship with God, humbling yourself before God, a connection between you and God to give thanks and be humble, talking to God, loving God. And I'm going to start crying. This is absolutely stunning, you guys. This is absolutely stunning. Look at how beautiful all these responses are. You guys know what prayer is. So, um, this is awesome. A response. Prayer is a constant reuniting with God after being baptized, us being united with Christ. Yes, right. Prayer is lifting the heart and mind to God. Our prayers will change as we go. Yes, prayer is communion. Beautiful. So, so now we can see what everybody's thoughts are on prayer. And so um, it's not, it's, you know, what you, what you reflected. Beautiful. I'm, I'm, so, I'm, I'm so touched by y'all's response that I'm like, okay, what do I have to do next? Okay. So Camila, does someone probably miss that? Maybe someone couldn't get to that uh, area, couldn't make it work? That would be a question for you to ask everybody uh, to teach someone that maybe couldn't make Did every, it. Can everybody see the Padlet? Does everybody keep, because you, you can see my screen, right? You can see it on my screen? I can, I can, yeah, I could, yeah. Okay, so anybody need help to get to the Padlet? This is really you, cool, so I'm happy to help. Did you get it, Niall? Yes, how do I send what I typed? Just press enter. Or just click on the outside of the... Hit up. Is it there? Did it stick to the, to the padlet, Niall? I think so. I'm trying to see where it is. It's a lot. You know what you could do is you can also... Uh, color a different well I never yeah okay you can do all kinds of things with this thing but this is good for what it says I'm, I'm really touched I think this is beautiful because I think we can see how it harnesses everybody's understanding of what prayer is okay so what we're gonna do now is um, go back to representation and um, miss where's my friend Ricky how much time do I have to talk? You're done. Am I done? Somebody, Deacon Bill or Peely, how long, how late do I go? Are you muted? You are supposed to be until 9 p.m. Until, no. No, 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 no. That's not true. Oh, Deacon Bill, why, that's what Deacon I can talk. You know, it's so funny. I have a joke. So once I had to tell my kids I had to give a salad for the last two hours, and I'm like, oh, my goodness, how am I going to talk for two hours to my teenagers? And they look at me like, uh, excuse me, Mom, where's the problem? <laughs> um, so I'll keep going. Said, I like to pray. The Deacomili is mute. Deacomili, I understood correctly or not? It's usually around until 8, 10 or so. 45 minutes, but Deacomili, you are mute. So you can you can continue up to eight fifteen. Eight fifteen, uh, okay. That's what I wanted. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. So, so how to pray? The question is this: One of the key elements, the key understanding of Camila de Convila speaking. Oh, sorry, Deacon, tell me. You have you have up to ten to nine. This is not. Uh, we don't have a break like we normally would when we were would have a meal in the, in the middle. Oh, so that you don't have to go that long. You know, I mean, you, you make your presentation, but you have you have to kind of cut it off at ten to nine. Okay, 
Yeah, no, I don't think I need all that time. I just was wondering how much, because it's different than, than in live. Yeah. So let's go back um, to the presentation. And um, let's um, learn how to pray. So here's one thing that's very different, very, very profoundly different between the, the Catholic understanding of prayer and um, a lot of what we would call like um, the secular understanding of or other religions, there is not really a certain methodology to reach prayer. Because prayer is not about a method. It's about a relationship. And it's about strengthening and growing in that relationship. Okay, growing in intimacy. So, but not that, how, even though we say that, there are things you can do um to help aid you towards a deep prayer life and um i'm part of a group on facebook called um authentic contemplative life or authentic contemplative prayer and i developed this resource for them and i think um based on this book this book here it's called into the deep by dan burke and it's a really really great little book because it helps break down the importance of prayer and it helps organize a, a very fantastic prayer called Lexio Divina. He renames it and calls it discovering prayer, but it's Lexio Divina. It's basically how shall I how do I go about praying with the word of God? Okay, and, and so I can but it's not a methodology on how to attain God. It's how do I start? Uh, what does prayer like? What does my prayer life look look like? Right? So I made this to help uh, the group. But this is like a quick reference guide to discovering prayer. And I made like a disclaimer. It's from Dan's book, Into the Deep. So you're going to start reading. So reading will seek. You're going to start reading, and then and it's thinking about mostly the Bible, the, the scripture. And in particular, even within scripture, the gospels will hold uh, an even more like a treasured spot, okay? But the whole, the, this, all of scripture serves for prayer. So you're going to start reading. So you're going to, what are you going to do is, a reading consists of an attentive, slow, leisurely, and repetitious reading of a short passage of the Bible. That's the first step. And the key questions that you're asking while you're doing that slow reading of the Bible is, what does the Bible text say in itself? You always want to seek the literal sense of the text. What did the author intend? What is the author trying to, to say? And what does the church teach about this subject? You, in order for you to be safe, because here's the thing. If I write the word... Let me give, do a, this little exercise with you guys because it's a very valuable exercise. And I think it, um, uh, okay, there's a sentence, right? And I am going to tell you like this, I didn't steal $4 from you. I didn't steal $4 from you. I didn't steal $4 from you. I didn't steal from dollar. I didn't steal from $4 from you. Every single sentence that I did, depending on how I emphasize it, has a completely different meaning. If I say I didn't, I didn't steal $4 from you. I'm saying I didn't steal. I'm, t I'm claiming I didn't steal. But if I, didn't, if I say I didn't steal $4 from you, what am I really saying? Well, okay, I stole, but they weren't $4. They were, might have been more or less. It's a completely, it's the exact same sentence with a completely different meaning outcome. So when you read scriptures, if, if it's difficult for us to discern what the meaning of a sentence is by the emphasis of how I read with one, two, three, four, five, six separate words, imagine trying to figure out this. So how do you know how you're supposed to read this? 
So that's why we read under the guidance of the magisterium. The church says, yes, please read the scriptures because that's the, you need to make sure you understand scripture. But you have to make sure that, you un, that you're asking, where's my paper? That you're asking the right questions. What does the church teach about this subject? So you want to always have the light of the magisterium, the light of tradition guiding you in understanding and interpreting the scripture. Because otherwise you're gonna run into this problem. Your mind could discern something that, oh, this is what it says right here. And well, you could be wrong, right? There's a possibility that you could be wrong. Then you're gonna read and you're gonna be asking these questions. When you're done reading, you're gonna do reflect, you're gonna reflect. And so reflection finds the goal of reflection. So you're going to prayerfully engage with the meaning of the passage and considering how it may apply to your life circumstances. So when Jesus said, when Peter says, okay, I don't have to forgive him that, that often, right? And, and Jesus says, no, it's seven times 70. Okay, maybe we need to think about, you know, okay, that's a good lesson. Is there anybody that I need to forgive? Right? Because surely, so that's an example. Like you're going to start reflecting and applying that to your life your life circumstances the key questions that you can be considering is what does this text say to me how does it apply to my life where is god leading me what is he revealing to me so you're asking these questions you're 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 gnawing the text into your heart and into your mind and you're asking lord speak to me i'm opening myself up i want to understand what you're talking to me what you want to tell me then you're going to respond. And so respond now engages you and your mind and your heart with God. So you're going to tell God. You're going to conversing with God about the passage. Literally, like you're talking to a friend. If you want to say it out loud, be my guest. If you want to say it in the silence of your heart, be my guest. The whole goal here is that you are, it's the, it's the communion of you and your creator who desires with you know with ardent desire that you come spend time to with him that you can talk to him that you listen um, to him camila with question yeah uh, so when you when you say that interpretation as the catechism that is so important that we have a question is that the answer and that's the question the answer by the catholic church in relation to the 40,000 different interpretations that the Protestant side has. Is that right? Well, there could be Protestant interpretations that are perfectly correct, right? They, they, they're not necessarily, not because you're Protestant, that means you're going to have an erroneous interpretation of the Bible. The, 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 what you need to just be careful is that, that if there is a doubt, you know, in the interpretation of the text, that you that you clarify or do, that you let that doubt be 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 formed um, by the magisterium, by the teaching of the church, because there are some critical passages in the Bible that the Protestants, in fact, hinges in you know diametrically opposing from the Catholic Church. You know, but the Ten Commandments are the Ten Commandments, for example, right? Like. The you know so but but in, but I would argue though in that sense too Pili is that in the in the in Catholicism there's a they don't have the sacraments right so when when I'm saying union with God as a Catholic we go much deeper we literally mean like union with God like that's what the Eucharist is Jesus wanted us to be united to Him so much that He makes Himself available at the Mass like literally physically it's himself available in every single mass so so the protestants you could never get to that depth of Pro in in protestant so when so when you're saying like forgiveness yes there is a level of forgiveness but there but the catholic is going to take you to the crucifix the catholic is going to say okay are you suffering for I, i'm getting off track here but what i'm saying is i don't want to discount catholic interpretation i think that there there can be fantastic catholic uh, or, or Catholic, uh, th uh, Protestant theologians, um, extraordinary, especially like Old Testament, it, it really. 
Um, but when it comes to prayer, we're seeking a, a, a depth that personally, this is my personal opinion, that I think can only be reached in Catholicism. Okay? So, so you're dealing in, in a Catholic environment, you can actually commune with God literally in every Mass. In Protestant, it becomes a very, it, it, it's, it's, you don't have the incarnated Christ in, in your union at Mass. So yeah. you're left with a, a, a spiritual communion, which can be profound. It's a fantastic. But we're, 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 going, we're going really, really deep here in the transformation of the human person. No, and, I, and you have mentioned something beautiful about the depth that I didn't think before. But what I'm trying to, to say is that the beauty about the Catholic system is that we don't have to think 40,000 times. No, 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 you know yeah, right, mean? right, right, yeah, well, and, 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 yes, right, correct, we don't, but, but you have to be careful here, because of what we're doing in Lexa Divina is, yes, we ascend to the guidance of the magisterium, we're not going to deviate from that in terms of how to understand scripture, but it's a, but it's also very personal, right, so when you read a passage of forgiveness, for example, it's not forgiveness that Peter needed to understand and how to communicate with, with, with the Gentiles because he was a Jew and how can Jews be clean, which is like a whole interpretation of what happened to Peter at that time. Like we could limit that, that okay, you're understanding scripture. But what I'm doing here is saying, no, there's actually a, a very intimate and personal message for you in that reading of scripture about forgiveness, for example. It might even be something like you say, you know what, it's, I need to go ask for forgiveness. I need to go to confession, for example. I don't know. The Lexio Divina part is, is, is completely, because here's something that you guys all need to understand about God. He doesn't think, not that I know how God thinks, but in theology we learn, <laughs> he didn't come tell me these things, is he thinks in the particular. God is, is concerned about Mike and Pamela, and Nick, and Niall, and Austin, and Mark, and Lori, his relationship with you is not humanity. It's, it's absolutely, completely So, what intimate. the church believes? How am I supposed to know what the church believes? I'm not Catholic. Your catechism. You start studying, Gerilyn. That's what your catechism is. Little by little, yeah. you start asking questions, and you start studying. God is not asking you the first... He's asking you right now is just to take the first step to say, okay, let me start learning. Camilla? Yeah. Barbara. Um, may, I, may I make a suggestion? Mm -hmm. when, you, when you use words like magisterium and uh -huh. like divina, these big words, students may not know what you're talking about. So when you get into terms like this, Please explain what they are because it's going to go right over their head, and you're okay. going to confuse that, them. That's right. You're getting. I can see their it. eyes. I can see their okay. eyes glazing over. That's so, good. Okay. I know. We're that's I'm that, talking okay. to them. That's, that's, I'm, so, I'm so glad that you said that, Barbara, because sometimes I, I'm, it, yeah. We I, forget. Let's not worry we, about those big words right now. I, I want to finish this because this so is like what you're going to happen. What's going to happen is if these you keep using these big words, these people are going to throw up their hands and say. I don't know what she's talking about. Okay. Does that, I won't does talk that about, help? Okay. Does that yes, help any? that helps. Thank you so much for the feedback. Okay. Okay. Thank so, you. So, okay. So let's go back to our little sheet here. So our little reference guide on discovering prayer. So once you had a chance to respond to God and you are, so what are the questions that you're dealing with is what can I say in response to God? Should I offer thanksgiving or praise? Or should I ask for his help in any particular way? Okay? That's, the, that's your responding to him. And then you're going to have a period of rest. You're going to start tasting that union. Um, especially as you begin your journey. journey. It's, very usual, it's very common, I would say, to, to, it's to be a very sweet time, a very consoling time in prayer, okay? When you're resting, allowing yourself to rest and remain absorbed in the words of God. 
allowing or inviting the Holy Spirit to draw you more deeply into his presence through what you've read. Let's say you've concluded that, let's, using the example that I've been using so far, about forgiveness. But then you know, let's say, oh my goodness, okay, I think I need to forgive this person in my life. But now it's like, but how? There are certain, in fact, many, many things about what God asks of us that we can't, we don't have the human power to do it. In fact, they are supernatural. Sometimes it could be a deep forgiveness of somebody that has hurt you deeply, for example. So this is where you're going to ask for the grace and you're going to ask him to help you forgive or love someone more or become more virtuous or give up a sin or whatever it is that you have discerned. You're going to rest and you're going to now let God change you. Let God touch you. Um, and the key questions, am I being patient, attentive, and open to God's movement in my soul as I rest in his self-revelation? Now it's his time. And now it's the time that you're going to receive his own work in your heart. And, and his work is transformational. So, so you might go into prayer like really uneasy or like, oh, I don't want to pray. Oh, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to talk to God about this, having to forgive this person or whatever. And you will notice that he's, he's incredibly gentle and he's, he never, um, and so as you rest in him, when he touches you, um, yeah, I told you the teenagers were going to come home, um, that he can touch you. And every time that God touches you, he's going to be very gentle and loving and, and kind and give you what you need. So you want to make sure that that this is like the one like the most critical part here and then once you've been touched by him and transformed it can be very subtle very very gentle you will encounter uh encounter leads to resolution so it leads into a resolution to act so you'll resolve allowing the encounter with god to permeate your day, causing you to draw ever nearer to him through his self-revelation and invitation to participate with him in making his presence known in the world. So you, being transformed and touched by him, now go about your day doing his will with him in you, right? And then the key questions that you're doing, that you're dealing with or that you're considering is, what can I specifically do to respond to what God has revealed to me in this passage? How can I carry this encounter with me into the day to influence how I think and act? So you're asking him, okay, so I learned this, I rested, I was, I was touched, transformed, and now I'm resolved. I'm going to forgive that person. I'm going to love this other person more. I'm going to be more patient. I'm going to try this. Or, you know, you're going to start your journey. This, the journey of sainthood, the journey of being transformed into, um, into another Christ. And then you can write down your resolutions and conclude with a prayer of Thanksgiving. Kind of like, okay, hold yourself accountable. Write your two, one, two resolutions for the day. And, you know, um, so I, what I can do I is- I have a question, if, I'm sorry. Yes. When you say, I want to, I, I'm gonna be transformed in another Christ. So for me, Catholic, I have, I have been in, a, in the role for a while, but for something, someone that is new, that sounds really strange. So what do you mean when you say, uh, you can be transformed? Into another Christ. Uh -huh. Okay, what I mean is this, it's, um, so we have to go back. Yeah, I, I, I'm glad that you guys are bringing this up because I forget, like by the time we're done with our CIA, I can, I can use all these terms and we're at the beginning of our CIA. Um, what do I mean by we become another Christ? Is in baptism, what happens in baptism is that you receive God himself into your soul. And there's a tech, theologians have a, a, a very specific name for that, and they call it sanctifying grace. That's just a big name of saying God's supernatural life now is in your soul. 
animates your soul. It makes you supernaturally alive. So for example, an analogy that I like to use when I teach this is this, you have natural life in you, but if you commit a mortal sin, your soul supernaturally is not alive. You could even say it's dead. Um, in order for it, in here, in heaven, in earth, you need natural life. In heaven, you need supernatural life. And so God gives you that life. And that's his own life that he gives. And he infuses into the human soul. And we call that baptism. Okay? Now, what does that mean? Well, okay, let's think about, okay, let's connect the dots for me, Camila. Jesus is God. He is the second person of the Blessed Trinity. You now have the same life that he has in you. We call this in Catholics, in, in Catholicism, you become a member, just like let's say you belong to a company, you're a member of that company, but in a very crude way, this analogy, but it works for the conceptual transfer. Now you are a member of, of, of all those people that are alive, supernaturally alive by the same life that runs in Jesus Christ, a member of his body, a member of his church. Okay, there's a tech, there's a term that, that theologians use and it's called the mystical body of Christ. So now it's like, it's, 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 how can I explain this? So like I have a baby, right? But I gave him life, but it's like, I didn't really, I gave him what I had. I had life, I, I had my body, but I didn't really give him my life, right? In, in, God's, in God's reality, he actually gives his, himself his own life, his own supernatural life. And so we become, and so don't think of it as like, Christ, like, it's like the same life that God, that the same supernatural life that, lit, that animates Jesus Christ, it's he himself. Because in God, there is no division. That, that's, the, 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 this I think gets complicated in my mind, because in God, who he is and what he is, it's the exact same thing. So when he shares his life with you, it's not like a, a thing that he gives to you. He, it, he's sharing himself with you. I know, I know y'all, like your guys are like, whatever, Camila, you will have time to learn. You will have time to deepen all this. Trust me, I'm giving you like a big steak. You'll have time to like cut it up and chew it little by little. I just want to finish the presentation. Um, and um okay well we already talked about the bible and then um, okay if i there are many 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 books that i could recommend to you in addition to the catechism the catholic church and this one if you're interested in starting like to to understand how to uh pray barbara mentioned a really good word i used lexio divina all it is is praying with the bible that's it that's all it is. I recommend this book called Introduction to the Devout Life. It's the, if, if you could, if you want to read, let's say, a very good book at the beginning of your journey, of your spiritual journey, this is one of the books that I would recommend. It's by St. Francis de Sales. And the chapters are very, very short. And you don't want to, you don't want to read this, like, just sit down and read it. You can read one little chapter a week. That might be enough. Or a day. It's called Introduction to a Devout Life by St. Francis de Sales. So, um, yeah. I'm sorry if I, if I was, like, too, like, if I use too many difficult terms. But here, what I'll do, is if anybody has any, let me put my email any questions at all, feel absolutely free uh, to contact me, 
send me an email saying, Miss Malt, Miss Malt, I'm thinking this fourth grader as a fourth grade teacher. Camila, what was that that you said? There. Camila, you can you can always email me. And I I have um, you'll see me around. Deacon Bill didn't let me go so easily. He says, no, no, no. So um Maybe someone has a question at this moment. Can yeah, that's a really great idea. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah, Camilla, I do. <laughs> no, not you, Deacon. I'm scared of your yeah. questions. No, what I was going to, you were talking about this mysterious grace and the sharing of God's, God's own life. And that's what that big word sanctifying grace means. It's some, some mysterious way yeah. we share in this life. Right. Now, it's a mystery. Yes. We're never going to understand that. Right. That's a, that's a thing of faith. But if you go to 2 Peter, if you go to 2 Peter chap, chapter 1, um, let me read this for you. Uh -huh. uh, that divine power of his has freely, this been, has freely bestowed on us everything necessary for a life of genuine piety through the knowledge of him who called us by his by his pre by his uh, by his own glory and power by virtue of them he has bestowed on us the great and precious things he promised so that through the through these you have fled a world corrupted by lust might by lust that I'm sorry that through these you have fled a world corrupted by lust might become sharers of the divine nature. So the Eastern church used to call that being divinized. In some way, you're, you've been divined. Um, we're talking about a sharing and the very, very nature and life of God himself. And what that does, as you were talking about, we become a part of that thing we call the body of Christ. But also, and I think very importantly, we are, um, we become a member of the family of God. Mm -hmm. Because it is through, in and through baptism that we become sons and daughters of the Father in and through Jesus Christ. And we are, in some way, again, through that divine sharing of the nature, we become brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ. And we are actually we share in some some beautiful and mysterious way the life of Christ himself. And as you were talking about uh, the Eucharist, we believe that this is the true body and blood of Christ. We are actually being joined to Christ himself. Right. I mean, uh, I don't know whether, whether that muddies the water more for you or whether it clarifies it, but it, it's a this, to a certain extent, we're talking about a mystery that. Uh, it's, it's, it, let me let me hold on. Let me give you an analogy that I think is um in, in like it can help at least get the intellect a little closer. If I showed you a picture of an acorn, you might get a, an idea of what an acorn is just by showing you the picture. If I painted an acorn or if I modeled an acorn to you. Um, you would have an even better picture, right? But what if I gave you a real acorn and I said, okay, this can become an oak tree. Now you have an even closer idea of that reality, right? But it's very difficult to convey to you what it is per completely, right? And then let's say I'm telling you, oh, this becomes a tree. You're going, what? Like this little thing becomes this massive tree. And then I show you how I plant and how over time it grows. What happens is the difficulty that you guys could be finding is that your, your intellect is, is getting something that the reality that we're trying to convey is like me, like you've never seen a tree in your life. And I'm saying that this acorn becomes a tree. So what you need to do is, is so for example, in prayer, the best way to start to get to know Jesus is by praying. So one of the best resolutions that you can do right now, for example, is saying, okay, this prayer, this, this is start this journey. You know, I, I put the link of the resource down for you guys in the, in the chat. 
download the, the sheet. You can read it. You can follow it. Uh, you can read the daily gospels from um, the, the every every day. There's a gospel of the mass that's celebrated. So you know it's already done for you. Just go in the in in the internet, and you can say, okay, what is the daily gospel today? And read that, and follow those those steps that I gave you in the sheet. And little by little, yeah. little by little, right? I didn't get married to my yeah. husband knowing him in two seconds. Little by little, you will grow in this understanding, in this communion, in this relationship with God. Um, yeah, it's by doing. You learn by doing. You learn by 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 being in relationship with Him. Okay. So, any questions? Other like any else? Anybody else has any question? Can I make a suggestion? Yes. Um, could we not put together a small dictionary of certain terms that we use? And have them explained in a simplified manner, so people won't become confused on these fancy theological terms. Sure, we can put. I think I mean, um, they, that exists. There's a dictionary. A dictionary because that, that would be very helpful to people that have never. They say they're coming from Protestantism, or they're it, you know, it's we don't know. Everybody's at an individual level we don't know where people are coming from and i think that would be a great help i think what would be awesome is as people as you guys have questions mm -hmm. it's really important to, to to let's let to the team members and 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 funnel those questions back to people um to, to try to articulate okay i understand this or it seems this but what about this idea that i bring with me or i don't understand like Whatever the questions are, I think it's right. But, but what I'm saying is, if they have a hard copy a, a, and a reference to what these words mean, yeah. they can go back to it for nine months. Yep. Can I make a suggestion? Back of the catechism. Mm -hmm. There are terms in the back of the catechism. Yes, whoever said that is really yes, that's true. Right. That, so there I are. Mean, yep. I mean, we're so used to these terms, we automatically know them. There is a really good dictionary called here. Um, I can share it. Can you guys see it on my screen? It's called the Modern Catholic Dictionary, but it's a website that uh, John Harden, Father John Harden put together, the, uh -huh. the Modern Catholic Dictionary. And You're it's absolutely screen, outstanding. Mm -hmm. You're not sharing your screen, Camilla. I can't. Oh, see. I'm not? Oh. I don't think so. And, and mm -hmm. uh, just to let Pelia know that I can't, just, I can't send any chat message to anybody but Camilla for a long time now. <laughs> And I don't know why that happened. Oh, I know why that happened. It's my fault. Right. I thought so, but I wasn't complaining. I, the same thing was happening to me. <laughs> no, the reason is because when everybody was sharing, um, I put in, I'm the host, and I said, okay, so I, there, um, everyone publicly. Now you can share to everyone. Okay. Can you guys see my screen? Uh-huh. Now I can. So this is a good a good resource for um, for terms. So for example, you could go here and say like S, and it has all the terms. Like so, you could go like sanctifying, for example. See sanctifying grace, and it will. You can research and you can the supernatural state of being infused by God, which permanently inheres, and you can read. The right. very, no, the it has it gives you and it gives you more like even more words to to keep going i can drop the link i'll drop the link in the chat for this uh, thank you okay so i'm going to let you guys go now um i will make pili the host again hold on pili deacon and you can take it from here okay Thank you so much, Camila. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Oh. There. Any other any other questions before I go? Okay. Okay.
It was great. Have a fabulous evening, y'all, and um, we'll see you again. And I'll try thanks, tonight. Thanks, Camilla. So, okay. Bye. Thank, thanks, Camilla. You're welcome. Okay, Deacon Bill. Now you got you got the floor. <laughs> yeah, I know I've got the floor, but I'm trying to trying to find my way back to where where I've uh, in in the upper. Uh huh. All right. In, good. Yeah. Um. I think very one of the things that Camilla said that was very important is that you learn to pray by praying. Uh, and um, begin, I would suggest, in the Gospels, um, and um, she's given you some great resources, and I was looking at our, in my bibliography, and that's, that's a shame that I did not have Hardin's Dictionary in there, and so I, I'll, have to, I'll have to include that, because I, I do have that on my shelf as well. And it is a it's a good it's a good tool for things Catholic. Um, let's see next week. Next week we have uh, our former adult formation director, John. Barosh uh, will be talking to us about the mystery of creation. Um, Joan is a, can we say you're a convert to the faith? Yes. Oh, you were baptized Catholic, but you never knew it. Right. Well, I knew it, but I wasn't raised it. <laughs> you were not raised in it. Yeah. So you went through RCIA yourself. So, yes. Um, so Joe will be on deck next week. Um, does anyone have a question of me before we close? I just would like to say something, Deacon Bill. Uh, I always remember the moment that Jesus was baptized, and when the when after. Um, John the Baptist, he and Jesus came out of the water, and then John the Baptist hear the voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved son, in him I well, very well pleased. And I, I think that's, that's the message for, for all of us in baptism, that how we can, at that moment, receive our welcome by the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit as members of the body of Christ. And probably at that moment, that relationship starts, right? And the family, you become a member of the family of God. That's a big, uh, we become sons and daughters of the Father in and through Jesus Christ, through that sacrament of baptism. Mm -hmm. Yes, right. We're intimately, intimately bound to God the Father. Right. Um, okay. Um, but, okay. Sorry, Deacon. Can I? Can I? Can I say something? Um, Go ahead. Right. Uh, thanks. Um, I would say what, one of the things um, is to well what. What I tend to do with this, um, uh, what, what Camilla was talking about, uh, praying with the Bible, I often just open the Bible at random. And um, while the, Camilla was talking, I opened my, my journal at random and it came up with um, uh, a section from Proverbs, which says, 
Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Um, so, you know, I think when you read a pass, don't, don't, what, what I'm sort of getting at is don't think you're going to run before you can walk. Um, so just let God enter into your heart. And you're going to crawl before you walk. Exactly. Um, it's, this is a lifelong journey. Um, and we sort of live our lives forwards, but we really only understand them when we look backwards. And that's what I've, I've found. I mean, I was 53 years old when I became a Catholic. And things are really only in my life when I look back at them. Now make, they now make sense to me. Um, whereas before they were just random events. Um, now I know that I'm, I'm on the path, I'm following the way, and um, I'm carrying my cross to Calvary. S Steve. Yeah. Can you give us that, uh, it was Proverbs, what was the verse again? It's, Prober it's Proverbs 3, uh, verses, verse 5 to 6. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. My husband said we went away from the faith <laughs> probably 30 years. And he told me last week, and he said, when we were Protestant, we didn't realize how deep is the Catholic Church. We didn't, we couldn't see how much our Protestant friends are missing. Once you are in the Catholic Church, you really know the beauty and the deep and the knowledge and the richness is so much that it's impossible to, to say that in one class or as you say, uh, Steve, we have to start like baby steps. That's beautiful. Thank you, Peter. Yeah. I caught you on the rebound, I think. You and you and Chris. Yeah. Uh, if uh, you know, I think I think Steve would be open to to a call. I would be open to a call. I think uh, Peter. Camilla, uh, Barbara, uh, there are a lot of people on the team, I think, that, that uh, would uh, lend, uh, uh, lend some of themselves to you if uh, you wanted to discuss some of these things more in depth. Um, I, I don't know, you know, Mark and Francis and I see Sandra up there smiling, you know. Yeah, uh, put her to work. <laughs> so uh, that's what this team is for. And I, I've just begun to understand what you guys on the team can tr contribute. Uh, Steve, your contribution is fantastic. Peely, uh, Barbara, um, you know, that's that's a great help. Because some mm -hmm. of you do take this journey yourself. Uh, mm -hmm. So sometimes we who have been Catholics from, uh, from the cradle, uh, we've heard things said and we, we sort of live in this this atmosphere and, uh, and it's like a foreign language to those who are coming into it for the first time. So don't, uh, don't, be, don't be afraid. Um, when I started learning to fly fish, there was a whole there's a whole terminology about fly fishing um, that, that I know about. If you um, decide that you're going to be a, a nurse or a nurse practitioner or an MD, you're going to you're going to run into a whole new vocabulary. Uh, that's in every uh, in every uh, sphere that you enter into. Uh, so so let those things. Um, develop slowly 
don't be discouraged. Um, and if we can help you, uh, that's what we're here for, all of us, every last one of us. So, okay. Um, why don't we close with a prayer? Uh, let me ask you this. Um, we've got a couple of minutes. There is power in prayer. And especially there is power in community prayer. When we join with our brothers and sisters in Christ uh, to pray for intentions. So if you have an intention that you want to pray for, you know, unmute yourself and say it. And we'll pray for it. Pray for the safety of my two boys who are going to be climbing a 14,000 foot mountain tomorrow. Okay. I myself would like, like us all to pray for my uh, son-in-law's family, his dad, whom we buried today. So um, they feel a loss and they need our prayer, consolation and prayer. Can we please pray for Biddy and Dawson as they go to the other parents' house for this long weekend? Okay. Sure can. Uh, can you pray for Jerry, my sister? She's going to start chemo and radiation therapy uh, a week after next at MD Anderson. Absolutely. For my oldest daughter who's suffering with depression. We can do that. Yes. For my kids' faith that is not very up there yet. Okay. For family members, for conversion with my family members left the church, my brothers and sisters all in California, my own family members here in my home. Conversion. Okay. do that. For my mother and my daughters. Okay. Okay. And for all the intentions that you hold in your heart that haven't been mentioned, um, let us pray for those things as well. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Good Father, we come before you, and in your great silence, in your solitude, we find ourselves asking for your blessings, for the gift of your Holy Spirit to heal the hearts and minds and souls of all those who were mentioned and for all those we hold tightly in our hearts. Make them whole again. Return them to their families where that is needed. May they know your divine love and your divine mercy, or maybe they have not known it before. Help each of us this evening to have the quiet and consolation and peace that is given in and through your Holy Spirit. And we join our voices together as we pray the prayer your Son has taught us. Our Father, Amen. who art in heaven, Amen. hallowed be your name. Amen. Your kingdom come, kingdom come, your will be done, be done. Right, as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless all of you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Good night, everybody. Thank Good night, Deacon so Bill. Good night, Deacon Bill. Thank you. Good night. 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 Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm gone. Poor blessed my email, my email. Bye. Thank you, Deacon Bill. Okay. Night night kids. Good night. Good night. Yeah. Night kids. Good night. Oh, he's talking to Paul. Good night. Good night. Good, good night. Good night, Deacon Bill. Good night. Biddy had a message for Pili. Oh no, Mim. Oh hi Pili. I hope you are happy. Oh <laughs> <laughs> that is so beautiful. And this is Dawson. Oh. This is his big brother. Oh my oh. gosh, you guys are so handsome. You're so handsome. Thank you so much, Billy. That was so, so meaningful to me. You don't have any idea. God gave me he so... Like, he, God, God gave me gifts, a small gift during my day. That And this is one. I'm so grateful. You see, he, he, he sent me that gift through you. Right. Isn't it beautiful, honey? No. He does. He uses people. So he uses your heart to give me that beautiful message. So thank you so much. Thank you. Good night. Good night, everybody. Letting us hang after a little bit. Can you say bye? Oh, bye, sweetheart. Good night. Hi, sweetheart. God bless you, boy. You have a beautiful mommy. Oh, good. Thank you. <laughs> no, I mean it. Thank you. I mean it. <laughs> you know, Al Wesley's back here, too. He had to go tend to other kids for a oh, second. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> but he's back. I'm, I'm here. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> I saw you. I, I was watching you. <laughs> <laughs> he's Thank trying so much so that we can see the Zoom meeting on our TV. Oh, and we're almost there. He almost got oh, it. So that's awesome. <laughs> Great. Awesome. I, I'm, I admire you guys so much. You don't have idea how much since I met you. Thank you so much. Well, the feeling is mutual. Thank you. We look forward to seeing you next week. Ah, oh, you guys made me cry. <laughs> God bless you. God bless you, Pili. Bye-bye. Is it